niche niche player that's right and how do you attempt or how do you even think of competing with big players maybe like vipro and uh, infosys we'll talk we'll uh, get an answer from you later okay but that's after a break stay okay. tuned Welcome back. We are in conversation with Mr. Ashwini Kumar, the CEO of ThinkSoft Global Services. Ashwini, uh, Ashwini was trying to tell us how how you attempt to compete with big players like Infosys, Wipro, and maybe other players as well, uh, considering the fact that you are a very niche kind of player. That's and right. does a brand at all matters in you know these kind of services or these kind of areas, knowledge based business? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kano, let me answer this in a very uh, different way. Uh, the traditional concept is competition. I think what we look at the whole marketplace as an ecosystem, where lots of players are required. There are big players required, there are smaller players required, there are niche players required, there are specialist players required. So our aim, we have not set out to make a very large company in terms of numbers of people, tens of thousands of people. What we have set out to do is to build an expertise-based company, which will be the best in its class. Uh, for example, many years ago, the Malcolm Baldrige Award for Excellence in Quality and Delivery was given to a small company with 50, 60 employees in the United States, and that was the best company in its class. So maybe we will be 500, 600 thousand people, but we will be the best company in our class. So that's what we are attempting to do. Uh, like somebody was saying that you know he he's the best taxi driver in town. So there's nothing. He's, he's the best. He's simply the best in what he does. And uh, my personal example would be a, a person called Red Adair, who puts out oil well fires. Mm -hmm. So he's the only fellow in the world who can do that. And if you have, if your oil well is on fire, you better call in Red, Red Adair, and because nobody else can do it. You mean to say, irrespective of whatever you are doing, do it at the best. Do it at the best, and you, they have to come to you because you have the expertise. Mm -hmm. So we want to build that kind of company. And whether it's big or small is a secondary matter. How big is your company as of now? We have about uh, close to 300 employees. And uh, we are growing at a steady clip, and whatever is required in the growth, we'll do that. But for us, expertise and competencies are more important than the number of people at the company. So that's what, the what does your balance sheet is? I mean, if you can tell us how how big we do it. around uh, three and a half million dollars of uh, 16 to 17 crores of business every year, and uh, this year looks very good because the market is picking up. So we should grow easily over 50 percent over the next three years. That's a huge target, 50% is something yes, yes, yes. you may not have witnessed in the entire life cycle of this company. Right? That's right. So we are growing at a very steady clip and the next three years looks very good to me because with India becoming a destination for a lot of outsourcing and uh, the world market becoming familiar with the options and, of, and the players and the expertise available here, I'm sure uh, we, uh, as the inquiries itself show already, I think things are looking up for us. As you mentioned earlier when you were talking, you also go out, branch out and you know, abroad and try to find out some customers for yourself. Sure. How, how, how is this job perceived? Is it, you know, uh, uh, in very raw terms, is it on the upper side, upper, upper segment of the value chain or it is considered to be on the lower segment? Actually, uh, in uh, every area, uh, the value chain depends on how much of complexity you manage. For example, if a global company came to us and said, you know, we already have a lot of test cases, just run it for us but run it globally. I think uh, many people would say there's a low end of the value chain, but I would say no because it's so complex to do the whole thing. For example, a BPO operation of large complex size, uh, which runs a routine thing day in and day out, may look very low end, but actually the management complexity and the acumen required to do it is a high order. So I think even in testing services, there's a lot of opportunities for doing complex things and large things globally for well-reputed global 500 firms. And we would say that uh, at least 50% of our projects are uh, giving value to the customer in terms of, you know, not only giving him what he wants, but managing a lot of complexity, managing a lot of risk on his behalf, uh, assuring him of uh, that the product is working on his behalf. So I think definitely a, a large part of our work is uh, traditionally what is high value chain. And does you have, have you ever felt that your customer feels that this is an additional cost burden for them? Why at all? I mean, if they have hired a, I say, a good company, a reputed company, it should be able to deliver what it is promising. Why should they hire a tester? Why should they spend in that? Do you yes. it a deterrent? Definitely, a lot of customers do think like that, and uh, awareness has to build in. But uh, what happens is the very nature of software development is such that uh, there is some error coming out at the end of the process. It may be two percent, it may be three percent, it may be five percent. Now, what is changing today is that uh, software is at the heart of everything. So the two percent can become a very very huge risk to you. Earlier, if it was when it was standalone or when uh, software is not so important or critical or strategic in things, 
you know, you could take some amount of error, some amount of risk, but today no longer you can take that risk. So I think more and more customers are looking at ways of, okay, that software uh, is risky, there are errors coming into it, so how do I do it? I can do it myself, I can do a third party, but I think the, the, uh, the idea that whoever delivered is responsible for the quality it may also be likely to change because no matter uh, who it is, there is some error coming out of the software, of, of any, any software delivery. Now you have also tied up with the NSC yesterday only. You That's right. I'm also tied up. That's what right. is it and how are you going about? Actually, so in the last five years uh, coming up, if you see that we have certain areas where we have expertise. So for example, core banking solutions, credit card solutions, and then in treasury solutions. Now there are so many Basically other... the entire gamut of financial services. Yeah, so the entire gamut of financial services is so big that and in the next three years, if we want to cover that, it will be very difficult for us to gather the expertise, uh, uh, wait for another five years to gather all the expertise but the market may come in the next three years. So to address this, what we have done is identified some key players. So we have tied up with NSC IT. They are very, very strong on the securities domain. They are one of the best uh, knowledgeable people in the world on that domain. So both of us, we have formed a, a sort of, a, we have uh, reached a memorandum of understanding. We are going to jointly tackle testing projects in the securities domain in the United States, uh, eastern part of the United States, exchanges there, brokerages there, also Western Europe the capitals of Western Europe where uh, private banking, brokerages, investment banks and settlements, commodities exchanges are there. So we are going to go and jointly pitch. They will provide the domain and we will provide the testing expertise. Similarly, we are looking to do the same thing in the insurance sector. Mm -hmm. We are looking to tie up with people who have the domain so that quickly by the end of the year we can ha we can address the whole gamut of financial services mm -hmm. as you said mm -hmm. uh, without waiting for organically for us to get all the knowledge through projects. So that's the idea of these tie-ups. Is it a very planned and conscious move? It's a very planned and, and strategic conscious. move. Yes, to, definitely. Know. Yes. Uh, what are your future plans, and can you tell us in brief? Our future plans are: we want to be uh, focused on to the European market because traditionally our strength has been there, and we have not had uh, much uh, headway in the United States market in the last three years, primarily because there was the Earlier there was the dot-com phenomenon, then there was the September 11th phenomenon. I think the market is just now opening up and then this is an election year, we have run into the visa issue, so nobody mm. can go there. Mm. So I think we'll let it, because of all these factors, I think we are going to look at the US market only towards the end of the year when the election is over. And hopefully in the in the year 2005, 2006, we should see some presence in the US market also. So it will be Eastern United States and Western Europe are our markets. And large players in India, SBI is already a customer of ours. And similarly, we are talking to the other large players. So, a bit 10 20 percent of our revenues might come from the Indian uh, uh, large financial houses. Do you have a good scope in Indian business, the banking sector as well? Definitely, we have a good for LIC, as you talked about insurance, yes. even when you speak about Yes, it. yes. You have SBI already have tied up, you have Union Bank as well. You know, all the big players who are already handling huge amount of data and right. are in the process of automation, it's right. not fully automated. Definitely Indian banks are going to spend 5,000 crores over the next three years in uh, getting all their application IT services technology going and uh, even if you take 10% of the testing market and validation market, you, you know, it's a huge piece of business and uh, of course tackling the Indian market has its own complexities and skills and competencies. So if we can ma manage that, yes, India is a good market for us too. Uh, thanks indeed, Ashwini, for joining us. It was